I apologize for the delay. We're going to go ahead and get started. Those of you who are remote, if you cannot hear me, please send me a chat to let me know that. Um, we have from Roger State University, um, Lori Martin, who is going to talk with us about, um, oh my goodness, math, something about math. That's my bad. <laughs> Lori, can you say your title? Because I can't find it on my phone. Um, promote student engagement in the mathematics classroom. Awesome. There we go. Promoting student engagement in the mathematics classroom with OER. I'm sharing. And we are, whoa, where's the slideshow? Uh, over to the right. The top. Thank you. I don't use this. Way over. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, there. Excellent. Okay. All right. Okay, hi, I'm Lori Martin. I teach concurrent for RSU. I teach at Prior High School, so our concurrent classes are at the high school. Um, I've taught on the RSU campus as well, on the RSU Prior campus, um, but thankfully they've let us move it to the high school setting. So I have 40 kids in one section, 33 in another. So student engagement is super important to me. I'm in a regular high school classroom size. Um, and then I have 37 kids in an honors algebra two class and 10 in a calc class. So wide variety. So I try to find ways to keep my students engaged. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is what I do with my kids the first day of class. So it may get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, and we're going to draw cards. I'm going to tell you what the task is that we're going to do first. Um, and then we'll draw cards and you guys will be in groups. So in my classroom, um, it looks, well, I'll show you in just a second when we get there, but I have walls of whiteboards. So they are constantly at a whiteboard, sometimes at a table, but most of the time they're up working. Um, so we'll just have to kind of pretend like we're at whiteboards today. So if you have a piece of paper to do this activity with your group, you can stay at your table. You don't have to try to make it stick to the wall or anything. <laughs> One. Right. I'm sorry. It's pretty snuck in with me. Okay, so should have eight, seven, and six. And one other, maybe just eight, seven, six. Is that right? Okay, so all the eights are going to get together, all the sevens are going to get together, and all the sixes are going to get together. Did you guys do that with the same part? We do, yeah. <laughs> this is that part right. Like, eight changes. We're six. Six. Okay. Um, do you want us to move, or do you want us to just know that that's what the students would do? Uh, either way, whatever you guys are going to do. Maybe you want to move? Eight. Okay. Do you want to move over here? Yeah. All right. So this is from, I don't know if you've heard of the book Building Thinking Classrooms, but this is at the end of chapter nine. This my principal calls this my math Bible. Um, and so I am trying to build my classroom where my students are thinking all the time. So I actually flip my class. So they watch a short video, sometimes before class, sometimes we just start rolling with the problem. Um, but they do their instruction part outside of class. That's my college classes, whatever class I teach, that's the way I do it. So that's the book that I got this activity from. So this is called The Answer to R. And so first, before you write anything down, um, I have these numbers from one to 10, and you can use addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we're going to just build some expressions. So can somebody give me an expression? Can somebody give me an expression using two of those numbers? Not the same number twice. 10 minus 4. Perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. So I have 10 minus 4. So 10 minus 4 is 6. Okay. So I forgot to tell you, we're going to mark out the numbers that we use. So we mark out 10 and 4, um, and we're going to mark out the symbol that we use. So we can't use 10, we can't use 4, and we can't use subtraction anymore. 
So I need two more. No 10, no four, no subtraction. It's not a trick question. Two plus nine. Thank you. <laughs> two plus nine, is, there's no trick, I promise. I'm not gonna be like, no. All right, so two plus nine is 11. So no more two, no more nine, no more addition. Okay, one more or two more, three more. Three times five. Three times five is 15. It's been a long day, so if I mess up, you just let me know. All right, mark out the three, mark out the five, mark out the multiplication. So, uh, six plus five is 15. Six divided by, that won't work. Six divided by seven? Sure, yeah. So I didn't give rules for this. So six sevenths would be my answer on that. All right, so now we have used three. So we no more. Or, or sorry, four, no more uh, symbols, but we have some numbers left, right? What do we have left? One and eight. All right, so let's just pick another operation and use eight and one. I don't care what it is. Like a fifth operation? Like just one of that. We can use an operation twice. Okay. Yeah. One times eight. One times eight. All right, I already have eight times one. We'll talk about commutative property there. All right, so eight times one is eight. So now we've used all of those. Okay, so change my symbol there. All right, so um we are going to now so we've created all these expressions we used all the numbers once we used all the expressions at least once we have one that's twice so uh, if we were on a whiteboard i would have marked those out as we went so it would be a little bit less difficult and then i would erase these problems so if i just gave you the expressions could we build the problems is the question so of course we could right so then i give my students and i did this with my math department too i give them five numbers and ask them to use those operations at least once and all the numbers only once and build five expressions for me. So I do this day one because I want to, it's a, it's safe. Everybody can do it. Like we could do it in a big, like even with elementary teachers that are non-math, they don't want to talk about math. They could still engage in this, right? Um, and then my students who are scared to death when they come into class, as sophomores, they can do this, like they can engage day one. And so I try to create an environment where it's safe. They trust each other, they trust me. Um, I call these banner problems. So they write across the top what their five numbers are. And then as they get that problem correct or they finish, I come over and check and say, yes, that's good. Then I give them another problem and they write their new problem at the top. And so I have about seven or eight of these. Then when students finish, they can steal a problem. I call it stealing because it makes it more fun. But they can steal a problem from another group and then work that problem. And so this continues as long as you have problems. So does that make sense? You guys want to try it? You want to try one? Or are you yeah. dead? You want to try one? Okay. All right. So the numbers are, let's go with this. How about 17, 2, 21, 3, 2. Those are your five numbers. 17, 2. 21, three, and two. So your job is to use those 10 numbers and the expressions at least once to create those five numbers. So an expression that equals 17. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. I think we're gonna do Okay. Yes. There's a good one. I think I've had four fours and maybe five and seven, maybe. Yeah. There you go, Amy. Did you keep this two twice? I did. Okay. <laughs> I thought I wrote it wrong. Okay. I'm just yeah. calculating. Yeah. I'm not sure. Do you need me to re explain? Do you need me to re explain? Yes. Okay. 
So we have that one. I don't know if I get the answers. <laughs> so the answers are those five. So you can only use those numbers once, and they just write those at least once to get those. I mean, that's the only way we can get something to the other one of the two hands. I don't know. Is eight plus nine? You just there you go. There you go, Amy. And then how do you get to Korea? No, that's five minus two. Get it? Oh, oh, you're supposed to be working with your group. <laughs> <laughs> I think she got it. Okay, so you did multiplication twice, though. Oh, you need to do that twice. So that's fine. Right. But I use seven twice, seven. Oh, yeah. I got it. I just do it. No, wait. I don't have to do it. I think I've actually used the wrong she did it. Okay. Oh, you did six months plus, plus two. Four. Four. That's your okay. Yeah. I did four months two, but then that doesn't work for my score. Okay, so do you have the same thing as me? Yeah, 10 divided by 5. 3 times 7, 421. Uh, 1 plus 2 is 3. That's good. I don't need the mic. You can use 5. 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 You can yeah, it's like two and three, and there's different numbers. So, no, you can use that one too. By creating, like we did at first, creating the expression, we have to get the answer. I would not recommend the same. Let me have them. You make sure you work it out first. Yeah. You, so, yeah. you build your expressions like we did at the beginning, build your expressions first, and then use those answors, and then you give them those answers. You work it through the back mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That makes sense. But in building, in building these two classrooms in chapter nine, he has a list of them already that you can use. Then to have Chapter. my students figure it out yeah. through the back door, mm -hmm. since they're the ones that have to yeah. teach it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, so rules in my classroom, because since we're not in a classroom, the rules in my classroom would be one marker. So there's one marker. The person with the marker cannot work the problem. They can, um, so they are, they can't speak and they can't work. So they're like, they're, they're, they're just a scribe. That's what they call themselves. I'm just the writer. Now I will tell you, they can't, especially my uh, college algebra and calc class, they want to work. Like they don't want to wait. Right? They just want to work. So I'm constantly having to say, pass the marker and then they have to pass it to someone else. And so you can see that if somebody's lost or doesn't understand, if you're on a board working, they can look. They don't have to wait on me. They can look at what someone else is doing or they can hear the conversation between people. And so they can figure it out. So I have mine do like four or five of these um, at least and then ask them if they came up with a pattern. And so we, I really stress math is about patterns and math is figure outable. Like you can figure it out. It may take you longer than normal, like you have been used to, but you can figure it out. And so I asked them to look for patterns, like did they work um, prime numbers first? Like if they had a prime number, did they attack that one first? Like what was their strategy? And so that leads to really good math conversations. So again, this is at the end of chapter nine, I think, in building thinking classrooms, but you can create your own sets by doing exactly what we did at the beginning. You just create your expressions and then give them the answers and then you have what their answers should be when they work the problem and you can make them as crazy as you want. Um, like I said, I think there's one that has like four fours, like there's, and they do the same thing. They're like, did you mean to give me four twos and a whatever seven? I'm like, yeah, I did. I sure did. All right. So there are my students. You can see them working on the board. So I have 13 spaces. So I have three portable whiteboards now, but I have 13 spaces for them to work. 
And you'll see in some of the other slides, I kind of adapted. I have some dividers now in my room, but they're working. Um, this is my student teacher, my intern. And she's student teaching with me full time next semester from NSU. And I'm super excited because she's all in on the building thinking classrooms. And so this was day one. Like she showed up day one, didn't have to be there. And she was like, whoa, I've heard about building thinking classrooms and never seen it in action. And I was like, you girl, you're in for a ride. This is going to be fun. So um, anyway, that, and I'm not, my students are not 100% engaged all the time. I'm not trying to say that. They are not. And my principal came in the other day to observe me and it was chaotic. RSU people came in to enroll them for next semester. It was insane. And I got him up working on the whiteboards and he said, you know, for the most part, they were engaged. They got a little off task, you know, talking, but then they were right back to it. And I said, well, when they're at the boards, they have to be engaged because everybody can see and I can see when they're seated at a table, they can get off task pretty quickly, pick up their phone, just a lot of distractions sitting at a table and they can hide. So I am all about working at the whiteboards. All right, another open ed resource that you can use is Desmos. I don't know, have you guys used Desmos at all? Okay, so you can go to student.desmos.com and you can do this, I mean, outside. This is a student um, activity that I have given my account class on defining the derivative activity and they brought it up last week like, we like the fly activity. That was so fun. And I'm like, okay, well, this is the fly activity. And so they go through, let me see if I can get to, let me see if I can get to it real quick. Um, You can have a, can I do this? Can I go to Desmos? Yeah. Okay. I'll just try to act like it's my own computer for a second. Okay, so I can go to my dashboard. So this is my dashboard history, and these are my two activities that I'm gonna show you guys. So this is the one on defining the derivative. Um, I have two students in there right now. One of them is me because I was checking it out earlier. But when I go to my teacher dashboard, so I have taught remotely before, like during COVID I did, but even before that I taught for a virtual junior high and high school. And so this is something that I can, you can watch kids do while you're talking about it. Like I could watch them work while I was giving instruction or while we were in class. And so they go to student.desmos.com and put the code in, or you can share the link. And then I can watch what they're doing as they move through this. So I am, it's probably me. Nope, it's Amy. Amy's on slide three. Um, but you can there's all kinds of things you can do and I, or I don't have time to do all the cool things that Desmos can do, but you can make the people anonymous that are in your class so that if you want to share something, they don't know who it is. You can set a pace so they can only work slides one through three and they can't just keep going um, and slow everyone down. This is the one my students hate when you pause the whole thing because they're like, ah, screen went, you know, stopped. And I, I mean, I don't like for my kids to be on the Chromebooks all the time. But these are fun, usually pretty quick activities. Um, if you go to learn.desmos.com, it'll, I mean, there's all kinds of um, videos and just how to's on using Desmos. You can create your own activities. I like to try to find other people's activities that they have already created. And then I go in and take, you can take the slides out that you don't want. So if they have a personal slide, like, this builds on to what we did yesterday and hope you had fun at the Halloween party and take the slide out. So you can delete the slide, put your own stuff in. Um, and so it's pretty nice. It's pretty handy. And it's, uh, see if I can get teacher. Oh, I'm paused. Unpause myself. Maybe. There we go. Um, so I can see responses. I can do an overlay. There's all kinds of things you can do. This I like the snapshots. If I have kids that have messed up on the activity, I can pull the snapshots and we can look at patterns um, and talk about what I like and what I don't like about it. Um, and then celebrate the mistakes and the things that are correct as well. So that's a little bit about Desmos. I'm going to go back. Um, there are like a, there are so many activities. You can also Google like if you want something on polynomials. I can't do two things at once, just in case you're wondering. There we go. All right. Um, if I wanted an activity like on parabolas, I would just Google 
parabolas, Desmos activity, and it'll, you can uh, find a ton there. I, I'm not a fan of the search on Desmos because it won't pick up everything for some reason. Maybe it's better now, but um, in past, my past history with it, it hasn't picked up what everything I've wanted. So um, this is marble slides. So it's kind of fun. They're messing around with parabolas and they're trying to get all, get all the stars. And so the first one is done for them. So it's like, yay, this is going to be fun. And then here we go. So they have to know how to flip parabolas over, how to like what makes them um, move left and right. So all the transformations, all the things about parabolas, there's different things for geometry. I mean, there's a plethora of activities. Um, if you, you teach elementary ed um, or college algebra calculus, there's a ton on here. OK, so that's Desmos in a nutshell, by the way, Desmos. Just if you go to desmos.com, it's a free graphing calculator. I don't know if you guys knew that, but it's free. Um, and they have a four function calculator. So if kids don't have access to a calculator, they have a Chromebook or a phone, they can have it on their Chromebook or phone. They don't have to pay for a TI-84 plus CE. It does the same thing and it's way more intuitive. Um, open middle. You guys heard of open middle? Guys, okay, <laughs> this is exciting. No, I know this is great. Okay, so Open Middle is another free resource, um, and it has K through 12. I mean, it has a lot of things on there. So my students um, right now in college algebra, we've been talking about rational functions. So we have not talked about operations with rational functions. So this is Monday. We are going to work this problem on Monday, and so this will kind of feel like the um, problem that we had just a minute ago. Usually it'll say using the numbers, using only the numbers from zero to nine, make this a true statement and I'll have whatever. So on mine, it says you can use any integer values and we want to complete the boxes so that when I divide these two polynomials, I end up with X minus one over X plus five. And so I have mine do this in groups, go to the boards, like all of the things, I have them do all the things that we talked about on the first one. And so the first one to get it right is the winner. So everything's a competition. I don't have to say that, um, but I have more problems for them to work after that. So it becomes banner problems. They write them. Once we finish that first one, then they'll go to the next one and um, work the next one. So if you go to open middle, I don't think I have that open. We're about at. Okay. All right. I'll hustle. Okay. So there are all the grades. Yikes. Um, and there are all the topics. Okay, I'm hurrying. You're promise. Right. 25 Sorry. minutes is hard. It's, it's supposed to be started a little bit. Later. My husband was like, there's no way you can do anything in there for 25 <laughs> minutes. So some of activity, I have uh, created some of these. Basically, you create, you pull four problems. You just get a worksheet. Pull four, four problems at a time in a set that have numerical answers. And each kid in the group gets one of the cards. They work the problems, add their answers together and check with you. If their answer doesn't match what you have, then they try to find the mistake. So they're spotting the error, which is huge in math. Try to find the mistake. So I do this with this with synthetic division because it's pretty fast. And they take the remainder and um, check with each or add them together with each other and then check with me. And I usually have four to five sets of cards. And so once they finish one set they go grab another one again it's a competition so it's a race to get things right and they can help each other but they cannot take the marker out of someone's hand or work on their problem they can only verbally coach them up um math equals love website sarah carter no okay she has a ton of activities on her website uh, for, i mean a lot she teaches AP pre-calc right now, so she's doing a lot with that. And so that's college algebra trig at the college level. But she has things all the way down to middle school. Question stacks are one of my favorite. Um, they literally stack on top of each other, and she has a template there that's really good. Um, I've used her puzzles at the beginning of the year. So I do non-curricular activities uh, for the first five days in my class. And that way, we're used to working on boards. This is my new favorite thing. Claim evidence reasoning, our science and English and history department use this. So they stake a claim and then we rotate. And I had several things that they had to do for this. 
Um, and I'll share that with you. You can see right here on the rotations, they had things to do. So this is my highlight. They stated the claim that the fiber would open down um, and there was in quadrant one or two and it had a white intercept and the people that graphed it, graphed it up and they were super angry. So it's really good um, for student learning and spotting the error. And I think there are a few other things that are in my slide, but I'll share those with you. Those are just resources that I use that are open ed also. So thanks. This is I want to be in your math class. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I needed you to take a picture because my fun. You got it. I got you. You did. Okay. Any questions, you guys? We we have like negative two minutes. But Sorry. We started late, so if you have any questions, fire away. All right, where do you want to be? Um, just here, and I'll act like I'm okay. Talking. Just like you're presenting. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. We'll just pretend. Okay, hang on. Yay. I'm gonna get your slide in there. Okay. 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 Yay! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Got so many people. Sorry, it was so fast. There, it's, it, 25 minutes goes by okay. very quickly. Um, and I can share the slide deck. Yeah. Well, I think. To Tracy, probably. Tracy, Tracy. from Lana. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She'll she'll have their drive. She's going to log into your account. Um, so that everybody can access it. I lost my card. Oh, no. Did you take it? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oh, this notepad. And you're good at it. Yes. Excuse me a minute. I'm trying to. Where is the download feed? Is it, is it, is it, is it's that webcam. Well, the can't the book can't like yeah. 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 uh -huh. yeah. 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 I can't yeah. 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 Do you want like a chair some of the good stuff on there? You need to refer back to me. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. We can give you a few minutes. Yeah. Sorry, I ran over. Oh no, that's I'm sorry we've already done it. Today's about today's no, yeah, already good. over. It's sort of like it's like <laughs> really very like, it's all good. Thank you. You did great. Thank, Thank you, Lori. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I seriously would love to be in the math class. Like, I feel like it could be if I could actually maybe learn math. Like <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I mean, I was the person who became an English major in college and an English teacher because I knew I wanted to be a teacher and they said, what kind of teacher do you want to be? I'm like, I don't know. What, 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 what doesn't make you take any more math? And they said English. I'm like, okay, great. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make English teacher because I didn't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. To do the whole duo thing. All right. Uh, so, we both are sitting on our chart and then we're not going The mic, we are. We are Broadcasting to Zoom or streaming or whatever the word is. Okay. Um, yeah. And the webcam is the mic. Sorry, friends. And yeah. the mic's looking at them. Okay. So, um, know what my like. Can I stop sharing for just one second so I can open my email? <laughs> is that okay? I don't think it's actually sharing anything, right? Now. Okay, awesome. So everyone's going to see my email for like two seconds. <laughs> oh, goodness. So we're here. Thanks for my inbox. I mean, they're in there, but they're just very. I feel like there's a goal. I'm not. 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 i am not i am not i am not i am not i no, it's okay. It's totally fine. Yes, I have kids and rights and then make them share everything there, you know. This is cool. This is great. <laughs> I could have logged into mine. I thought maybe it's in your okay. Now you're gonna want to slide you will want to share before you start the show. Okay. Is Thank you. Right? So the zoom okay. uh, over to the right. There you go. Take it big. And then do share screen. Yep. And then pick the opening okay state. Yeah, there you go. And then I think you'll need to hit extend down there. Right? Yeah, the lower right back. Yeah. Close your phone again. Not too much. Good. And then just share.
thank you. This oh. is a new experience for me. You're good. <laughs> it's actually been happening all day. It's funny. Yes. We've all had a little check Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you can introduce you yeah. quickly. Hello again. Um, it's Rishmita Hadra from Cameron University. And I'll be the moderator for this session. And the title is Opening Oak Estate uh, by Patients Lightfoot, Aiden Minton, and Kathleen. Thank you. Thank you. I will see the chat. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. So I'm Patience. Um, I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Open OK State. I am a senior at Oklahoma State University. Um, I study business, nonprofit management, and sociology. Um, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of Open OK State um, since the first team kind of came together um, in 2021. So it's been great to be part of it. And then I'll pass it to Aiden. Uh, my name is Aiden Minton. I'm an agribusiness major, uh, also studying political science and law and legal studies. I've been a part of the team since January this year, um, doing a lot of student engagement and outreach. Um, so firstly, I just wanted to go over like our role as interns and what we've been able to do um, under Kathy thus far. Um, most specifically, I think um, as interns, because we are paid for our position, we're able to prioritize the OER work um, that we do on campus, um, that being increasing student awareness and faculty awareness. Um, it's um, really easy to, um, you know, get lost in all of the all of the things of being a college student, um, especially when you're working at the same time. And I think we're lucky enough to be working for a program that we're extremely passionate about and have a lot of lived experience and perspective to offer. Um, I firmly believe that open education is a social justice issue. It's very um, prominent for students who can't afford higher education, can't afford learning materials, and we get to be the voice to those students. Um, I think the number one thing that I hear from students, like not just me, not just my friends, but even just people who you just see walking down the street in Stillwater, where we are, uh, is that their number one problem on campus is parking. But the second is always the cost of education. Uh, they talk about how um, whether it's, you know, just affording rent, uh, paying for food, that are these are all basic necessities. And then they talk about, you know, how are they going to pay that first level bill? Mm -hmm. um, so this being able to work on the side of this is something that directly impacts students in a way that is one of their number one issues. It's really rewarding and something that I'm just very thankful to be a part of. Yeah, it is really rewarding. I agree. I have that experience of trying to figure out, trying to pay my bursar bill. Um, I paid for a textbook um, this semester that was half my rent. So it's yeah, it's pretty um, intense. And I do think OSU is so lucky to have this program. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, and just getting to let other students know, hey, we're here, we exist, we're here to help. Um, yeah, any questions so far? Okay, okay awesome. Um, so from our like intern's perspective, I just wanted to go over um, what we do um, as a non-student organization. So like kind of the um, parameters that we so like submit to you in the um, as not a club, if that makes sense, um, because um, a club can have um, all of the resources from um, um, like this, the union and having social media and just um, all of that student to student um, connection. Um, we kind of have to skirt around that, um, which is totally fine. We were able to find like new creative ways to reach students. Um, my favorite thing that I um, introduced to the program my first semester was um, Spotify playlists. So it's crowd curated. We um, asked students, um, you know, what they would like to hear on a playlist um, for studying. Um, and, you know, we marketed it as songs to listen to when studying your free textbook. Um, you know, I think the, um, the image, the SpongeBob image is really accurate to studying and uh -huh. Um, all of that, but it is on Spotify. Um, we chose Spotify because it's um, pretty well popular among um, OSU students, um, as well as Apple Music, but it's kind of more complicated. Um, and we just kind of were like, submit su submit songs that you'd like to hear. And um, also I encourage you all to submit songs you'd like to hear um, by scanning that QR code over there. Um, and we kind of vet the music and just to make sure it's like, it fits the vibe of the playlist. Um, but there's nothing really um, that we prohibit from being on playlists. 
And then a lot of um, our early um, imagery that we pushed out um, for, through like flyers and um, signage was, here's our Spotify playlist. If you like scan it, it's like, hey, we're open OK State. We're here for free textbooks and free learning materials. Um, we kind of kept track of our outreach um, within the Spotify playlist. It's a good way to track how many listeners we had for the playlist and how many people were interacting with our program, um, especially when we um, couldn't have like a definite number from our call to action because that was always being updated. Um, so we started, we launched the Spotify um, in September of 2021. And this graph kind of shows the first six weeks of that being active. And that big jump where the star is, is when we had our first outreach tabling event, which was Halloween themed, obviously. Um, and we, um, me and our, my um, coworker Trinity at the time stood in the lobby of our library and um, had like a little wheel um, of prizes that students could win if they spin it. But the um, criteria for spinning the wheel was you have to like our Spotify playlist or sign our call to action. Um, we thought this was a good way to get students informed. So you like have to read what we're presenting um, before you can like get the free candy or the free tote bag or the stickers or whatever. Um, other avenues we um, started utilizing was partnering with other organizations and all these um, other outreach events. Um, our most popular event was partnering with the Student Arts Alliance and um, painting the tote bags that we use for our marketing materials for the group. Um, tote bags are very popular. I see them all over campus now, which is so awesome. Um, we have done this event and we ran out of tote bags within the first like 30 minutes. Like people were ready to paint some tote bags. And that was awesome because in order to paint a tote bag, you had to sit and talk to me and give me, I had to get this wheel. Um, which was great because then we had so many more students aware of our program. Um, the gaming, the Mario Kart with Open OK State, we've done that two, three years in a row now. Um, and that has always been a good turnout. It's um, part of the library's open house party at the beginning of the semester. And that's always great because the um, enrollment period hasn't closed yet. And students can, you know, find out which um, courses are marked with OER attribute um, by talking to me sitting directly in front of the Mario Kart screen um, and, you know, find more about find more out about that. Um, and then to the very right is a, a flyer was circulated with our um, OSU's new student orientation program. So every student that came in um, through um, orientation during the summer, it's about I want to say like 500 students like a day, like they do it. Um, it's all the new students coming in. They have to go to orientation in order to um, sign up for their classes. And they get all this fun paperwork, all the fun flyers about what's going on on campus, all these new freshmen. And we were fortunate enough to include um, an infographic about what we do in order to, you know, kind of signal to freshmen and mostly their parents coming in, hey, this is how you can save money on textbooks. And, you know, making sure we kind of, intervene with information about our program before it's too too late it's never too late but before a student has um, you know already out of pocket hundreds of dollars um this is our fairy tale campaign um savvy wesson is responsible for all of the beautiful artwork um this was also just one of those things where we wanted to um, catch students eyes in a way that was out of out of the norm and like kind of view it in a way that was going to jump out a lot of students you can see um the jack and the beanstalk um campaign is like around all these other organizations flyers but it's very um unique in that i think it'll really jump out at students and we're working on circulating this more throughout the year um and i also like that we're at a point where we can um create an analogy to using oer and you know there is an easier way um the princess in the p1 she's you know resting easy because there's no P, there's no um, structural barrier to buying textbooks. Mm -hmm. um, so that um, I really love. Um, and the art's beautiful and Savvy is such an amazing artist. She was with our program, it was graphic design major. Um, and then the next thing that I think has been a really big contributor to uh, our success on campus is partnering with the Student Government Association, which Aiden knows a lot about. Yeah. So student government on campus is one of the largest organizations um, and technically every student is a part of our student government. Uh, so when 
um, Patience and then Trinity, who was with her at the time, brought this to a few of my friends, uh, Audrey and Sydney. Um, they are uh, some of those student leaders in student government. And they said, this is a problem. We agree. Let's figure out a way to say, here's what students believe about OER. Um, so they came up with this uh, recommendation and they brought it to our student government senate and it was passed. It was unanimous. I'm 90, 100% sure actually. It was unanimous in passing saying that we believe the work that Open OK State is doing is beneficial for our students and we want more OER resources implemented on campus. And what this did was huge for our campus. Uh, it not only brought this to student eyes because it was posted on student government social media, as well as um, other organizations on campus. What it also did was it led other student leaders to start uh, researching what this was all about. That's how I got to this position where I am today. That's how I learned about Open OK State. But it also some um, some other people that I know started looking into things such as opt-in versus opt-out programs. And then as well, um, implementing homework uh, applications into Canvas, which is what we already use, instead of having outside uh, book dealers. Um, like McGraw-Hill. Yeah, like McGraw-Hill. Uh, instead, just implementing that into our Canvas pages so that we can make sure that our campus is making things cheaper for students. Um, as I go back to, like, it is the price for college is the number one issue other than parking for students. And we need to make, this was something that was bringing this not only to student eyes, but the administration's eyes, because it may, this is the voice of the students. Yes, SGA is such an important bridge between the like general student body and faculty. And we knew that by offering this resolution, that faculty would be able to start paying attention to our program and paying attention to what the students need. Um, it was, you know, all of the data is there. And we, I think we use this, um, like template from Michigan, what they had passed a similar resolution um, in their student government. And it was, you know, we sat down with the speaker and vice speaker of the Student Government Association and we presented for the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Senate. <laughs> um, and, you know, gave them all of our statistics and gave them our insight as students and our lived experience. And it was unanimous and it was great. Um, it's been really helpful. Um, also um, branching out into other ways to connect with um, the mediators between the students and the faculty. So like through this, we're able to reach out to um, college stucos and um, student councils and provide them with something concrete that we've done. Um, and uh, we've reached out to college Ferguson. Ferguson, Ferguson. College of Agriculture. Uh, we've, I've had conversations with the uh, College of Engineering, Architecture and Technologies president um, for their student council as well. Um, other ones, such as CAS Student Council, the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, they are all very much into this program. They want to make sure that uh, their colleges are implementing this in some way. Yeah. And that is pretty much all we have for you today. Thank you so much for listening to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'll share a bit from the faculty perspective, from the coordinating perspective, um, having and, and this also speaks, Pamela, I think, to some of the things that we're working on with OCO about the student scholarship, is that there are things that I just would not catch or be aware of, that since we have them right here uh, and hear them talking and we see the student perspective, we hear their voice and uh, catch things like the fact that the textbook costs hit the bursar after the financial reimbursement has gone back out. So by the, so they, they get reimbursed, right? And didn't you say that? And mm -hmm. save the money. And and then bam, their burst, the textbook costs hit their bursar. So they've got that load again, you know, another. And then also when they hit their bursar, they're labeled TXTBK fee. And so that's another thing that's interesting to me. It's like, well, as we see some of these studies coming from commercial vendors saying the cost of textbooks is declining as far as students are reporting. Well, it's part of it because students aren't recognizing that's what these, yeah, and also, and this is what, this is the way I'll pitch it to you. And now I haven't, this is still anecdotal. I haven't done, you know, like a research study and I need to do that before I so I'll say that. This is just anecdotal. But um, I do think that would be interesting for admin who are hearing from students, quit raising our fees, quit raising our fees. And they're like, we haven't raised our fees for three years. And the students are experiencing this fee hit their bursar that, you know, what they're perceiving is a fee and, and, so having them there, having their voice, 
kind of helps us find a better understanding of some vocabulary that is shared, that's not shared, uh, and and things like that. So, uh, so proud and thankful to have them on board. They also have spearheaded um, an OER champion initiative. We and, and are working to have those champions recognized by SGA. And I I love that they when they when we hired when I first hired uh, patients in Trinity, uh, I brought in some from the School of Business to help with the interviews because I'm not great at it. And I said, well, these are things I would kind of like to see. And the business school person jumped in and said. Okay, this job is going to be unlike anything because Kathy thinks she has ideas, but really you're going to need to come in and bring some structure, you know, so, and it's a dear friend, but she's exactly right, you know, and so they came in and I kind of said, here's some things I think would be cool, and patients was, okay, and then we'll do some things actually <laughs> useful and interesting. So what I would share as a, a faculty coordinator is um, really having an open mind and and giving them room to, to dream and imagine and do do what they want. And, and then you get these amazing results. Two years in a row, our SGA presidential candidates have had textbook class as part of their platform intentionally and refer to Open Up Gate State. So, and that happened because they did what they knew would be best for the program instead of just checking boxes uh, that I thought would be there. So what questions would you like to ask them today? Now that they've... I'd be curious, you have Open Up Gate State, you know all of their love for some of us who um, are beginning uh, dabbling in OER or even creating OER initiatives on our campus as students, how what do you see your role in, in that process for helping those of us who are um, you know, taking up the OER? Um, so if it's still a series of projects exactly. and not a branded initiative, yeah. graphic um, initiative. Graphic, it's not a brand, not a brand. It's graphic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so are you speaking to like um, increasing student awareness? Yes. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. You need student awareness and you need to get student feedback. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a vicious yeah. cycle. Yes. yes. Um, I would say um, it really just starts with like one informational, whether posting, flyer, even just the, I'm having this session to talk about it with an open door. Like it's um, just like, getting the first few students to know about it and then go and tell their friends about it, I think is probably, you know, the very domino effect, probably the fastest, easiest way to increase student awareness. Um, we are very lucky in that because we're students ourselves, we know the um, correct, not the correct, but the um, avenues to go to um, increase efficiency and student awareness and to have the most impact. But um, I think the best way is really just first first thing is blanket awareness, just being like, hey, this exists, whether it be on a flyer or an A-frame or, um, you know, just how many questions, email me. Like, it, it can be that simple. Yeah, and I would just talk to your student leaders on campus who um, are already doing this stuff for other students. Uh, at OSU, one of the biggest things is tabling. It mm -hmm. may seem simple. But sitting out um, in front of the student union <laughs> at the table, so many students pass you and they all think you're giving out free stuff. So they're going to come up to your table <laughs> yes. and they will listen to whatever you say because they want the free stuff. Yeah. That is a college student thing. So whatever it works on your campus. Yes. Free like food that. is even better. Yes. Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys have ideas or any initiatives oh, that yeah. includes yeah. fully online student appointments? Program. Yeah. Hey, we've got a gap. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, it's a lot of my online I'm... students and they don't know all the resources that we have and they don't read emails. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. it's kind of hard to get them more engaged to understand all the resources that they can use. I do know the online coordinator for us here. So, so yeah, they're good. We have a next step. Central State College. Okay, yeah. That's a great. I didn't even give you a chance to answer. Maybe you have. <laughs> no, it's okay. I don't I really don't think we have put anything like concrete in the work. But thank you for bringing that up. That's a good perspective because we're not online students, and like that's a good perspective to keep in mind. Um, especially the paradox of being online, not reading your emails. Um, I think there are some avenues we can explore. And now my brain is turning. And so thank you so much for bringing that up. Isn't it great you get questions that make you excited again? Yeah. Well, I think we should keep maybe that in mind as we structure those scholarships. Yeah, that... one, of the, one of the organizations I'm a part of right now, uh, it's looking at how representation within those different uh, groups on college campuses 
um, how they perceive messaging. And one they're looking at right now is international students and how they see these messages. And that's something that I was actually looking at seeing, how can we do this for Open OB State? Because international students will interpret this stuff differently than a domestic student who may know what textbooks look like for what it is like in an American institution versus in an international institution, so. Cool. Have you had a student that you had a conversation with that like was against OER? Like, I just want to just give me, just give me the textbook. I just want to have a textbook in my hand to read and leave me alone. Like, um, one of them, I talked, I had a conversation with a student who was really wanting to switch. We are an opt out institution right now. Okay. So uh, a lot of classrooms and uh, they can have a textbook that is automatically built to their classes right. and they have to go in and say, we're not taking, I don't want this book, so I'm not buying it. Um, and they were looking at trying to switch us to an opt in program where if students wanted a the textbook, they could just hit a button and say, okay, I'll buy that. Right. Um, and they brought it to a bunch of people and all these people were like, no, we want us to be able to say, no, we'd rather not have a textbook because I don't know if I need this textbook. Let me go to this professor and then they will do that. So it became something of rather instead of, is this textbook necessary? And the conversation then switched to, how are we gonna use this textbook? Is there other options? Which began that OER conversation where they weren't against OER, they were rather, how can we implement it in a correct way? Sure. So that I get the education that I want to get. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like they think they're missing something mm -hmm. if they don't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I think um, on the other side of that, I have I've never gotten someone like blatant disagreeing with our methods or with Open OK State or the utilization of OER. Um, but I think there is a a large population who don't really care. Um, at least on OSU's campus, um, it, especially if you are, you know, financially secure and like able to, you know, you don't really look at your bursar bill if you're not the one paying. Sure. Um, okay. So I think there is um, certain segments that we cater to at the students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, um, students who may be more likely to experience the burden of tax costs. Um, and I think that's where our main focus lies. Um, but also that's under the umbrella of the entire student awareness. Like we want everyone to know about it. And if it's not gonna be beneficial to you or you don't care if it's gonna be beneficial to you, then that's okay, but at least you know about it now in case it ever becomes an option where you need it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, no no outright um, disagreement, okay. um, but people who kind of just want the free stuff and wanna leave. Sure. Yeah, I'll <laughs> say as like, for as someone who prefers a physical textbook, mm -hmm. when I am studying, um, if I have a class and they're like, well, this is optional, you can, choose whether or not to buy it. One of the things that I will do, I'll also go and buy it because I can afford to buy this textbook and it's something that I would like, but then I offer it to all the people in the class who might need to use it. Um, and because a lot of people do not have that right. well-being with it and they um, they really love the OER initiative because of that reason. It allows uh, the sharing of materials instead of having to pay $300 for a textbook. So that's cool. And awareness of the cost then maybe like motivates you and helps you know to do that in cases where you have had to purchase a textbook. That's, that's neat. Yeah. Thank you. This is so cool, you guys. And I'll, when I, uh, so we've lucked into, or maybe I was unconsciously intentional, but uh, Ains very interested in policy and uh, patience is a business student. And so we were able to, and, and he's very involved in student government. She's very connected to uh, student groups. So if you have the luxury of building student outreach. I think having that diversity uh, of thought and involvement and thinking, and they both think very differently than I do, and that it's, they think in a linear process and mine is more scattered. So, you know, going along with bringing in people that are have different skill sets than, than you do. So, yeah, very proud of them and thankful for them. And we're thankful to uh, Niffin and Open OK State for funding their travel to and from here, as well as their registration fees. So, Okay, they're clapping for you, so we must be <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.